Hi again. Uh, thanks for joining us for session six of six in uh, form-based codes for Santa Rosa. Uh, this last session is uh, all about frontage types and standards. So thank you for uh, joining us today. As you can see uh, on this opening slide here, um, the image on the left and the image on the right are completely different. And that's because the image on the left did not consider uh, frontage, which we're going to talk about in depth today. And the building on the right did. Uh, the building on the right really shows the um, intentional entries um, uh, to ground floor units there. Um, and then you can see a lobby entrance down the street there on the right uh, going into the building, providing access to other units in the building. Uh, and the building on the left just considered that uh, sidewalk as some kind of property line that could have been the rear, could have been um, anywhere. Um, but it's actually on a sidewalk where people walk by and go to other buildings and other areas of, the, of, this, um, of this community. Um, and, and it's neither good for the pedestrians or for the people on the ground floors. As you can see that they have the mini blinds up because of the lack of privacy, um, just the way that building was designed. So frontage is a very, very important topic. Um, and uh, that is why uh, we always recommend including regulations for frontage. So, uh, here are some uh, examples of frontage regulations from a form-based code. And you can see the top left example uh, shows a porch, for example, here uh, in, in um, a cross view or section, as, as we say in, um, in, uh, in a code. And you can see there are uh, requirements for how close it can be to the sidewalk, how deep it needs to be, um, what the distance overall that you need to have that element work well uh, on the front or side of buildings, how tall it needs to be, how um, far it should be raised from the ground uh, to, to provide that, that good element of um, interaction and also a little separation for the, for the occupants. They might want to participate on the street and be out there on the porch, but not necessarily be at eye level with the sidewalk. And so that di distance from and distance above the sidewalk is, is important. And it's, it's really in important to also underscore that this element uh, is not covered in conventional zoning um, as, as, the, as the, the topic of building types that we talked about in session five, it's not covered either. And so uh, it's very important to understand what it is the community is looking for and then turn that into to standards uh, to get those outcomes. And so, you know, you know, from a broader perspective, what is frontage? Well, it's that basically the ground, how the ground floor interacts with the public realm. And the public realm is um, that area beyond the property line out into the street and to the other side of the street. So you can see it highlighted here in yellow or here in this diagram where you can see the private lot whether that's a publicly owned uh, city lot or it's a, it's a privately owned um, uh, property, the idea is that there's a public right of way and there's land on the other side of that public right of way, which is, is not, um, not always publicly owned. So um, we've tried to identify the difference here. And you can see that that, that, that uh, public realm is consisting of that private and public uh, area together. And, a big element of that is frontage. And you can see here in this example, there's a ground floor with uh, three nice windows on that front room facing the street, and then an engaged porch providing uh, entry to the, to the building. You know, again, th this is super important because without the idea of frontage, um, you know, you might say, well, yeah, this is a bad example because it would never happen in our city. If you look at your rules, then ask yourself that question. And if your rules say that this couldn't happen, then okay, it might not apply to your town. But I would really challenge you to look at your rules and see if in fact this is not allowed. And I think you might be surprised. Same here. This is a combination of not recognizing frontage as a key element of a place as was done on the building on the right. Um, and also recognizing that frontage goes along with where parking can be located. So the building on the left, uh, the rules did not recognize 
parking or frontage, uh, let alone together. And then, you know, here, this is one of my favorite examples because the street, um, this street where the, these examples are from, the characters like on the right, um, it's a street of front yards with porches um, and the front yards vary in their depth, but, but it's, that's the character. And in the 80s, a um, uh, famous architect came in and experimented on the left there uh, with the, that pattern. And so uh, whether you like that design or not, that pattern breaks the existing physical character that is more like what's on the right. And so uh, as that happens over time, uh, the, the, um, the importance of continuing the pattern um, goes away because the pattern becomes diluted and confused about what it actually is. And is it that important anymore because so many buildings are turning their back or side to the public realm? So frontages have very much to do with the public realm in making it positive or not so positive, as in this example. So this example is very, very uh, well done in terms of um, architecture and materials, but it is not very well done in terms of the ground floor and frontage. You can see the building is sunken a little bit, and I'm not sure if that is to, to meet height requirements or if that was um, some other uh, due to some other aspect of the site, but uh, a ground floor frontage requirement would not have allowed this situation. And again, as you saw in the opening slide, the people walking by this um, feel uncomfortable looking in those windows and the people in those, win in those windows, in those rooms, feel uncomfortable with you walking by uh, and looking down into them. Uh, so this is not an optimal situation and it could have been avoided and ground floor uh, frontage requirements would have been key in, in avoiding that outcome. So as we saw with the, with the building types, there's a palette of frontage types. And you can see from the left, there's um, a front yard, uh, sometimes the porch, sometimes the, with another type of covered entry, there's a porch. Uh, there's all kinds of um, residential options there from the left to the middle. And then as you get from the middle to the, to the right, those are more public, more um, neighborhood center or main street type of uh, frontages. So thinking of them as there's more privacy on the left-hand side of the spectrum and uh, less privacy because it's intentional, they're, they're meant to be less, less private uh, on the middle to the right of the spectrum. And knowing where, are, where you are on that spectrum really helps you um, use these, these tools of frontage uh, in your zoning standards and uh, in uh, uh, infill um, situations in your neighborhood. And here are those um, more private or uh, more residential type of, of frontages. Um, and you can see they all have a different purpose. Some are closer to the sidewalk, some are more set back. So it's, it's not a one size fits all, thankfully. And, and again, uh, where you are in the neighborhood has a lot to say with which type or types uh, you will allow to make that character respond to um, what the char character of the neighborhood uh, wants to be. And then at the other end of the spectrum, here are photos of, of those examples with the shop front, uh, you know, really well-known type there on the right-hand side, and then um, covered walkways of two types, one an arcade and the other a gallery. Uh, one has occupied space above and the other does not and then uh, a forecourt, a terrace, but they're all ways of bringing that non-residential, sometimes residential um, ground floor to the sidewalk. And again, less privacy here, more privacy here. Uh, so an another easy way to think about them. And then taking that information um, and coordinating with the zoning districts and the intended physical character of those zoning districts and applying that to locations on a map um, and going back to the regulating plan uh, that we talked about early on in this series. So you can coordinate the intended frontage types to correspond to the physical character and the building types that you are allowing in each of these zone districts. And then providing regulations. So here are three examples of many. You saw that, that spectrum of types, it's eight to 10 different types and here are just three. Uh, showing how you can provide that section diagram and standards and plan diagram and standards and then 
um, illustrative examples through photos, and then identifying which zoning districts each of these types are allowed in, and then um, the, the dimensional requirements for each of these, these types. So thank you very much for uh, being with us today and, and learning about frontage types and the standards and, and for being through, uh, with us through all of these uh, six sessions uh, talking about form-based codes. And again, you know, these are, these are overviews provided uh, for your um, information and, uh, and curiosity. You, you might have a million questions and, and, and ideas. And so we look forward to talking with you and hearing those questions and ideas and uh, just uh, getting to meet you.